Cheating ex-wife upset I leveled up after ditching her. She wants my help now. <laughs> she came crawling back, huh? Mm -hmm, yeah, you say it here. Cheating ex-wife comes crawling back for second chance. Ah, oh, ridiculous. Cheating ex-wife upset I leveled up after ditching her. She so funny how someone will cheat on you, get caught, continue to disrespect you, and laugh, stating they'll gladly sign divorce papers to get away from you. As if I was the issue, and I was the reason she cheated. I tell you, I went through it with my ex-wife, but with the help of my therapist, who is today a good friend of mine, I made it out and leveled the F up. I mean big time. Now my ex-wife is begging for a second chance. I got divorced in 2011. I met my ex-wife on a social media site called MySpace when I was 19 in 2006. Oh, MySpace. Oh, what, those were the days. <laughs> MySpace, wow. Those were the days, man. You had, the t you had your top five friends. You get you play music on your profile. Yep, I remember those days, man. Fun times. I was in my last year at junior college at that time. I know, I know, you all are gonna scold me for this, but she was nine years older than me. I know. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. Get it out, please, please, just get it out. <laughs> so yeah, she was 28 when I met her. So to me, she was beautiful. Still, she still is today. She used to model from 18 to 24. She's published. And I'm being honest, guys. She truly is beautiful. Inside is hideous, though. Well, I came to learn that. From the beginning, my mom did not like her at all. It was the age thing for her, but she got over it and just put up with it. She did not have kids when we met, but she would always talk about being ready to settle down and have kids. At the time, I was okay with working towards marriage, but, but I had no interest in having any kids yet. Until I got a great position in my career, I made that clear, and she was okay with that. She would always still bring it up, saying, my clock is ticking. Her mother had her at 42 and her brother at 44. So I would tell her, ah, you'll be fine. Your mom had you late. Anyway, we started dating and dude, we would have so much fun. She just introduced me to a lot of stuff I wasn't familiar with. Nothing bad, but before her, I'd never been to a club or a bar. We travel all the time, especially to Florida. When I turned 21, we had so much fun together. It was my first time going to a casino. We got drunk. I won big that night out in Vegas. Just a lot of fun. It's almost like we balanced each other out in a way. She was very outgoing and I've always been this reserved guy. Anyway, I asked her to marry me in 2010. She was excited and said, finally, when I proposed. True, I really loved this girl. Never thought she'd do me the way she did. We married quickly that same year. There actually wasn't a big ceremony at all. Just her and I, my parents and her parents, in this small room with a judge. We went to a resort in Arizona for our honeymoon. It was pretty cool. Went hiking in the mountains. It was fun. Immediately, we started trying for kids, but it didn't happen. She was 32 at this time, and she would snap at me about it. It's your fault. We should have been trying years ago. Now I'll never be a mother. I even went and got checked, and my, and my sperm count was perfectly normal, and I was able to have kids. Also got tests done as well. The doctor said it is risky to have children, the older you get, but that she was perfectly healthy. She stayed in tremendous shape, worked out every day, not a day skipped, and ate a great 
diet. No restrictions type diet, but definitely a well-balanced diet. Her being so health conscious did rub off on me. Guess I can thank her for that. But we tried and tried that gear and nothing. One time she was sure she was pregnant, but the at home test kept saying no. She went to the doctor telling the doctor, I know I'm pregnant. They ran their test and she indeed was not pregnant. This is when she really changed on me. She started talking to me like I was her bad kid or something. Talking down to me. I'm not man enough. Why don't I have a master's degree like other successful men she knew? Dude, all kinds of disrespectful crap. I went off on her at Target once. I accidentally pushed a cart on the back of her heel. And she yelled, watch where the F you're going. I got in her face and said, stop effing talking to me like that. It was an effing accident. People in the aisle were looking. She literally ran out of the store crying. I walked out behind her. I got to the car and she was bawling saying, unlock the effing car door. We get in the car and she just starts crying saying she's sorry and that she's so frustrated with everything. I told her I understand that not having kids right now is bothering her, but we'll be fine. She apologized again and we drove off. She told me to pull into a car wash. One of those automatic ones because she wanted to wash the car. Once we pulled in, she proceeded to give the greatest BJ she had ever given me. Afterwards, she told me she loved how I put her in her place and wanted me to be that way more often. Though that actually did work, and with my lack of experience, it's something I learned while in that relationship. Anyway, the issue continued because she really wanted a baby. So, October 2010, she left her Samsung phone on the couch. Her pin was always 0000. Either of us never changed the default passcodes on our phones at the time. I snooped because I started to wonder if she was cheating on me. Because the way she would talk to me sometimes just wasn't cool. She had a text thread between this guy who later found out was a teller at our bank. He definitely was trying to sleep with her and tell her she could do better than me and how he is the man for her. He and her are the same exact age and got engaged years later after her and I divorced. She would tell him how... It wasn't right to go out with him, but she really wanted to and how she regrets marrying me. He sent her d pics and everything. She'd reply how she likes it, etc. I saw enough. When she got back inside, she was out walking our dog. I had her, I had her phone in my hand and I said, so you like Tyrone, huh? She said, give me my phone. I held on to it and was asking, so you regret marrying me? She said, yes, now give me my phone. I gave her the phone and I said, I'm out of here and we're getting a divorce. She laughed her butt off. Ha, good. Please bring me back the papers. I will gladly sign them. I kept it cool and went up and packed my stuff. But man, that crap hurt, dude. Crap, I was 23 years old, man. While I was packing, I was beating myself up, saying to myself, what the F was I thinking? I'm effing married and I'm only 23. Why would I do something so stupid? I got all my clothes packed up and I left. I went straight to my parents' house. Dude, I cried like a little bee in my parents' living room. My mom held me and they told me things would be okay. But true, even though I'm over her, I still know that pain today. I don't wish that feeling on any man. I actually searched for a therapist on my own. Man, I didn't have any friends. I completely abandoned them after getting with her. Dude, it's like she had me under a freaking spell or something. All I cared about was her. She got served divorce papers via mail and like she said, gladly signed them. She sent a picture to my phone of her and the bank teller guy holding the signed divorce papers. That crap tore me up. 
This is when I actually sought out a therapist. My therapist was a 40 year old man who I'm still cool with today. That man picked me up. Very stoic guy. Telling me to pick my head up. It's not over. You got more to accomplish. Go do it. She'll regret losing you. Don't bother trying to stick it to her getting revenge, but just move on with your life and you'll win. We eventually divorced finally in 2011. Since then, I went back to school, graduated with my master's in 2015. I passed a PE exam in 2020, and I am now an engineer licensed by the state. The firm I work for is a very successful firm, and we do work all over the U.S., this firm has won many awards, and I hold a high position here. I make very good money just from my career, and I also teach evening courses at a local college twice a week. I know for a fact I wouldn't have done any of what I have accomplished if I stayed with her, and I have to thank my therapist for this, who is also my friend today, for lighting the fire under me that got me motivated. I could have easily just slumped into a depression and beat myself up while she had moved on to another D. How I knew about her getting engaged a year after our divorce is because my mom told me. She ran into her one day and my mom told me how she was engaged to get married and pregnant. A year after that my mom saw her again at a church my mother was visiting and my ex-wife told her she never got married again because she found out that the guy was cheating on her and got another woman pregnant. My mom said she kept asking about me, and my mom said she was so glad to tell her about all my accomplishments. <laughs> Go ahead, mom. <laughs> Just like a mom. And even showed her the article I was in representing our firm in the local news, talking about projects I'd worked on. My mom said her eyes lit up and she said how proud of me she was. Today I am a father of a three-year-old girl. She is indeed my girl. My child's mother and I were never in a relationship and she is a good woman and a mother. We met in, a uni we met in university. She's a marketing manager for a local firm. I don't think I'll ever get married. I have no desire to do so. So... I never changed my phone number. I've had the same number since I was 19 years old. So I get a text asking, is this Matthew? I said, yes, who is this? The person texting. Hey, it's Michelle. Me. Michelle? The person texting. Yes, your ex-wife, Michelle. Me. Oh, hey, ex-wife. Is it okay if I call you? Me, why, what's up? Ex-wife, honestly, I just miss you. I've been thinking so much lately and wish I would have fought to stay with you. I'm so proud of you and I wish I could have been by your side during all of your accomplishments. Things have been a bit tough for me though and I could really use some help. Anyway, see, I'm rambling. Can I call? Me, no. I then proceeded to block the number. The nerve of her to come crawling back begging for my help. No effing way I would ever help her. Darn shame. Thanks for taking my story. Wow. Dang. <laughs> she comes crawling back. So. The, I love. Don't you just love it how they just try to rub it in your face. Dude, I, I've been through that before, man. You, you leave after you find out some stuff and they're like sending videos. Look, I'm hanging out with somebody. Oops, I didn't mean to text you that. Like stuff like that. Just trying to get under your skin. Like I moved on. Ha ha. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But I'm glad you played it cool. I'm glad you played it cool. Like it didn't bother you. And shout out to James. James is the real MVP here. Your therapist. You know, you, I hear a lot of people say stuff like, oh, therapy's a scam and it's stupid. And it's a waste of time. 
Look, man. We need more therapists like James. James said, look, man. Pick, pick your head up. Stop. You married young. You made it. You survived. I want you to go back out there and win. You are not to go home and sit and put your head between your legs and cry and no. You get your butt back out there and you freaking win. I freaking love that, man. Salute to James. We need more James in this world. Wow, that's that's an, that's insane, man. I love this story, man. Thanks for sending in this in, guys. Like I said, if you want to send in a story, send it to True Story Nation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's True Story Nation at gmail.com. Fiance cheated on me with my father. Me, 27 year old male, fiance, 26 year old female, call her L. My father, 52-year-old male, call him B. My mother, 50-year-old female, call her R. Like many who've had something like this happen, I never thought something this like this would happen to me, but here we are. I've never used Reddit, but I've seen stories from here on TikTok, so I thought I'd give it a shot for any advice you all could be giving me. From listening to some other stories, you all like backstories. I'll try and be as clear and precise as I can, but it's only been a week, so if I start to lose it during the telling of this, I'm sorry. Elle and I met in her freshman year of college. We were both dormed in the same building where we eventually met. We later found out we lived two towns away from each other, so whenever we went home, I let her drive with me. It only added like 20 minutes, so it was no big deal. After multiple trips and hanging out at school, we started to date. I have a close-knit family, as did she. So we told our families right away. I had met hers plenty of times when dropping her off. But it was nothing more than an introduction and exchanging pleasantries. Both of our families expected each other with open arms, and our relationship grew. I was a year ahead of her, so when I graduated... I went home where I was offered a good job with great pay. I visited her at school whenever I got the chance and whenever she came home, we would make time for each other. After she graduated, she moved in with me as both of our jobs were in the city near where we grew up. Like me, she was offered a position at the company she works at now with great pay. After living together for about three years, I proposed, and we have been planning our wedding since. Now, on to the part we're all reading for. Looking back, there was plenty of things I overlooked that I just wrote off thinking my father was just trying to welcome my ex into our family. Things like my father calling her all the time, and if I was around, they would just tell me they were talking about the upcoming family party or something along those lines. One time, Elle was in the shower, and her phone rang. I seen it was my dad, so I answered. When he realized it was me, he sounded both upset and surprised that I picked up. I then was asking, what's up? He responded that he wanted to talk to Elle about my mother's birthday. That was in a week, and after a minute, we ended the call. Even typing this out now, I feel like an idiot for not seeing it sooner. On the day I found out... It was like any other day Elle had Thursdays off, so she made breakfast for both of us. When I set out for work, she gave me a kiss and told me to have a great day. During my drive to work, I realized I had forgotten some paperwork I would need for a meeting at I had at 3 p.m. I shrugged it off and told myself I would just go home at lunch to get it. Elle texted me throughout the day talking about all the casual stuff a couple talks about. Like, what do you want for dinner? I did the laundry, blah, blah, blah. I didn't think it necessary to text her I was coming home for lunch, so when it came around, I just left work and went home. When I got home, I noticed a car that looked like my father's in our parking lot. But I didn't think anything of it, and I just parked and went into our building. When I opened the door, I was met with a scene out of a movie 
where a man comes home early and catches his spouse cheating. Such a cliche. There was a trail of clothes, both his and hers, leading to my bedroom, and the sound of faint moans echoed through my apartment. I stood at the door in utter shock. My brain was a mix of rage, sadness, and disgust. But if you were a fly on the wall, you would see what looked like a statue. I just couldn't move. When I finally snapped to, not knowing how much time had passed, I took out my phone to record. I picked up all the clothes that were on the floor and threw them in the hall of the building. After I filmed the walk to my bedroom, the door was open. I stood in the doorway filming for about a minute, then flipped on the lights. They both jumped at the sudden lights and looked at me. In my utter shock, it was my father in bed with her. After the initial stun, my father noticed I was recording and started to panic trying to find anything to cover himself and telling me to stop recording. He found a towel and wrapped it around himself and started to walk toward me. I told him, if you don't want to get hurt, stop coming to me. He either didn't care or didn't hear me and reached for my phone. I hit him square on the jaw. His head bounced off the door and slumped to the ground. L shrieked. I am. I aimed the camera at L and said, concerned about your F buddy, but nothing to say to your fiance. My father woke up after a minute and I told him I just needed to come pick something up for work. So I'm heading back. You pieces of crap are here. When I get back, I'll send this video to everyone you know. I ended the video, looked at my dad who was still coming too, and said, You're dead to me. You're no longer my father. But you might want to go back home and talk to mom because I'll be talking to her very soon. I sat in my car for a while until one of the bosses at work called to ask where I was. I told her I was on my way back. And when I got to her office to hand her the paperwork, I must have looked awful because... She started asking what was wrong with me. I told her it was nothing and I'd be okay. I could see her scanning me up and down and she noticed some blood on my collar and stood up, rushed to me and said, you're bleeding. I looked down and said, it was my father's. You look confused. So I pulled out my phone and showed her the video. She watched it in its entirety. She was introduced to Elle, but never my father. She sat there silent for a moment until it finally clicked that my fiance was cheating on me. But not only was she cheating, it was with my father. She was asking if there was anything she could do, suggesting I take some time off. But I told her, I can't go back there right now. That I just need a minute and I'd be fine for the meeting. And I have another shirt in my office. The meeting went over fine. I put on a smile for everyone like nothing had happened. My boss came up to me after the meeting and was asking how I could do that. But I just said, I don't know. And I went to my office. I then came home and I was alone for the first time in a very, very long time. Wow. Fiance cheated on me with father part two. Wow. Hello, everyone. I didn't expect to come back to Reddit and have this much support. I didn't really plan to update at all. I just wanted to put what had happened out there and hopefully get some advice. After I wrote down all that happened, I closed my computer and kind of fell into a depression. After I posted, it hit me like a train to the ones who think it's fake. I wish I was this creative. I'd write books instead of working a nine to five. I'll try to reply more on this post. I just logged back on and it was honestly too much to try and reply to every, every comment. Just know I read through most of them. And I truly appreciate everyone's inputs, both negative and positive. So, the day after I posted, I tried to get into contact with my mother, but none of my calls were connecting. I wanted to see if she could get lunch with me, and I'd tell her everything. After about a dozen tries, I decided to get into my car and go to my mother's house. She needed to know what happened as soon as possible, even if talking about what was going to happen going to make it hurt all over again. During the drive, I thought about what I would say. 
and how I would say it that made me start to panic. I had to pull over twice to throw up. It's not every day you have to tell your mom that her husband is screwing your fiance. I pulled into the driveway and sat in my car for a moment to calm down and gather my thoughts. I was in my car for a few minutes when my mother threw her front door open. So I stepped out of my car. She started cursing at me saying how dare I come to her home after I hit my father for trying to break up a fight between Elle and I. Wow. Wow. She called me every name in the book and called me an abuser. She told me I need to leave since Elle isn't ready to forgive me yet and that if she's smart, she hopefully never will. Yes, apparently my father took Elle to my family's home and told my mom that Elle and I argued and when my father tried to spot it, I hit him. She continued on for a while until I finally snapped and said, really mom, because your husband is effing my fiance, that's why I hit him. And if you can't take my word for it, I have video. I'll send it to you, but because my own mother can talk to me like this, don't expect to ever see me again. I don't want to hear your apology when you finally figure out that you're just a crap of a mom as my piece of crap father. Her face dropped. She looked like what I must have looked like when I first walked into my apartment and caught them. I pulled out my phone and sent her the video. My mom took hers out and turned it on. She pulled up the video and watched it up until the part where I turned on the light. She then put her phone down. She looked at me, but I turned and went into my car. I backed out of the driveway. I looked at her before I took off and she was in tears. My heart felt for her, but too much was said during that fight for me to pull back and forgive her. When I got home, I started clearing everything out of my apartment that had to do with Elle or my family. I boxed all of Elle's things up and put them next to the front door. Legally, this has been her place of residence, so I can't technically kick her out. Her name isn't on the lease, also. She's the type of person who shies away from conflict, and if she returns other than to pick her things up, there will be plenty of conflict. Anything that had to do with my parents, I boxed up and put into storage. Like I said in my first post, we were a very close family, but I've never had a problem cutting toxic people out of my life. I texted Elle's parents and told them, I'm calling off the engagement, and told them she's been cheating on me. I thanked them for everything they've done for me. Our relationship was still building, but they were kind and supportive of me, so this just added more hurt to the mix. I finished by asking if they would come pick up all of her belongings. I haven't gotten a response from them yet, but I'm hoping they come grab their things. So Elle doesn't have a reason to come back. Beyonce cheated on me with my father, part three. Hey everyone, I'm sorry I haven't updated in a while. Everything hits me in waves. I go from just being numb to boiling with rage. I haven't had a happy moment since I found out. Other than a few friends, I don't really have anyone in real life, especially since my family turned out to be crap. Quite a few things happened since I posted last. It's been about a month, so this update will tell all that's been going on. After my last post, I decided to get the ball rolling on everything that needed to be done, like getting tested, finding a therapist, and moving, and of course, buying a new bed. I started by calling my doctor's office telling them I need to get tested and to refer to me a therapist. I had my first appointment with the therapist two weeks ago and we decided to continue once a week. Also I got tested last week but it'll be another week or so. So until I get the results cross your fingers for me. I get in touch with a real estate agent, friend of mine, and he sent me a ton of listings and decided on a refurbished cabin on the outskirts of my city. I finished moving two days ago. When I finished moving, I called Elle's parents when I when they picked up. I told them I moved out and Elle has still yet to pick her things and that the landlord will start showing the apartment in a few days. So someone better pick her things up before the landlord throws it out. That must have lit a fire under them because the next day my former landlord texted me thanking me for getting the apartment emptied out. No one knows where I live. 
other than the friend who set me up with this place. So I know L or my parents won't be dropping by. The only thing that sucks about this place is I traded a 10 minute walk to work to a 45 minute drive. My phone has been blowing up with text messages and calls from L, both my parents and some of my friends, but I have no interest in talking to anyone other than my therapist. At work, I've been a ghost. I go in, get my work done, and I leave. On the rare occasion I have to talk to someone, I put on my fake smile and pretend everything is okay. My boss from my previous post has been trying to check on me, but I don't really tell her anything either. I just tell her I appreciate it, but I'll be okay. I get that time heals and all, but I feel like that's only relevant when you're dealing with one issue, not when you lose who you thought were the three closest people in your life all at one time a huge part of me died and there's no chance of resurrecting it the meeting with the therapists are going well i suppose i've never done therapy before so i have no reference on what good therapy is you do get along all right and she really seems genuine and wanting help first session was us getting to know each other and delving into what brings me to her nothing in depth but me just telling her what happened in my own words the second session went a bit deeper. She was asking me about the relationship I had with my parents. I told her up until now it was great. We talked often and always communicated very well when something was wrong and that I grew up in a great home, but that all means nothing now. She was asking why I cut my mother out of my life. I told her she said things to me I wouldn't say to someone I despised, then told her there's no way she can come back from that. At the end of our session, I gave her the link to my page on here so she can read more about how I feel. I feel like it's easier to type things out than to speak it. So, if you're reading this, hi doc. For now, I'm still miserable. I thought I'd be okay. By now, not necessarily happy, but okay. I know some of this is my own fault, not communicating to my friends, but when I think about responding to them, it just seems so exhausting. I know they'll want to get together or come to my place, but I just don't have the energy to be around them. Until I do, I'll work, go to my appointments, and sit on my back deck sipping on some Bottom shelf whiskey. Trying to enjoy this beautiful view. I haven't hunted since high school, so maybe I'll take that up again now that I can hunt from my back porch. Thank you all for reading this far. I'm sorry, man. I'm so, That's wow. Your father? Your freaking father? And... And not only... He took it a step further with the whole lie. Yeah, your son punched me in the eye when I tried to stop him from punching his girlfriend. Like, what? Your father is freaking nuts. You are okay. I salute you for walking away from him. Sir, you are dead to me now. Mm -mm. No. Heck no. With my fiance? And then Elle, she just, she just scooted on out of there, didn't she? Okay, I'm just going to slide and slither away like nothing ever happened. I don't like confrontation. I'm just going to stay away. You're a little nasty piece of crap. Not trustees. Oh, I tell you, man. You can't. Guys, I've said it over the years. I've told you guys. I don't trust anybody. Anybody. And I mean that when I say that. I don't trust anyone. Everybody will betray you. It, it just is just how people are. People are just selfish. People are just selfish like that. His own father banging out his girl. Mm. No, she she's texting him throughout the day. Honey, I did laundry. Oh, I can't wait to see you tonight. Mm. I'm I'm gonna make spaghetti for dinner. I'm going to do this. Oh, I miss you. Oh, let's talk about our kids' names. And for lunch, she's getting her back blown out by his father. Guys, don't fall for those little tricks when you're at work 
and she's texting you all sweet and being all extra nice. That might be the day. That might be the day you want to just pop up randomly at home for lunch. See what she's up to. She's being too nice today. Oh man, dude, I'm sorry. I want to stick on this and see what you and just and watch your journey, man. I hope you continue to move forward. Things will get better, bro. They will get better for you. You moved out, you got a new place. You're not telling people where you are. I love that. I love that. I was the same way, sir. I didn't tell no I didn't tell anybody anything. I'm good. Yeah, I'm living. I'm living somewhere. Yeah, I bought a place somewhere. No, nope. you don't need to know where I'm at. I feel you. Because sometimes you just got to be alone and, and be by yourself. And um, I promise you, you're going to come. You're going to become a better person. You're going to accomplish so much. And you're going to say, wow, I'm so better off. It's all, It's going to always suck. I, what I think, I think you and your mother probably will end up reconciling because you have to understand he went and lied, but she did say some harsh stuff, but he went and lied to your mom. Uh, I think your, your, your relationship with her will get better. Um, I wouldn't want to be nowhere near my father after that. Like, dude, I'll deck you again. And, and Miss L, uh. Don't, I'm glad you're not answering her calls. She's blowing up your phone. Forget her. Forget her. She's dead to you too. How do you explain that? You can't explain that. You can't. You can't explain any of that. How long has this been going on? Let's check out the comments. So glad you found out before the wedding. Yeah. Did you tell your mother personally? I think you handled it well, considering. I can't even imagine how you feel right now. Elle and your father are truly disgusting. Talk with you. Talk with your mother as you both will need someone to lean on. Oh my gosh, I'm speechless. I just don't know what to say, man. Update us on what happened next. Have your fiance, has your fiance moved out? Dude, talk to your mother. Yeah, I figured he lied when your mother wasn't answering. She must have said some stupid crap for you to leave like that. The balls on your dad to bring the bring L to your mother. Someone someone would get stabbed in my social circle. Not saying me, wishing the best. You mean to tell me that after you caught them? They had the audacity to go stay with your mother and lie to her about you? People never cease to discuss me. How low can you possibly get? People equals crap. After I get tested for STDs, I'll set up an appointment with my therapist that was OP. Starts off with, Good morning. Man, not sure I could summarize this all in one video. I would do my best to cliff note it. I tripped across your channel looking for answers like most men do in my position. Two years ago, my wife had an affair that started over Christmas as an emotional affair. We were married for 12 years with kids. Two of them were from her previous relationship. I was in Florida with our daughter on vacation when it became sexual in our own home with a mutual friend. Drugs, alcohol, lies, family six members hiding it. Wow. Everything you could imagine. All this while we were in marriage counseling. Involved a PI and I had to witness some pretty jarring things that I still have nightmares about. The worst was her performing on him for drugs in a parking lot with a dealer. Our marriage was rocky for some time after family related problems. I had a fair amount of guilt. After several months of slamming the door in her face. She was asking if we could start over. I agreed, and that was one of the biggest mistakes I have ever made. Things went well for several months. We went through the holidays, and I felt like this could be repairable, even though I had never received an apology. Real remorse was constantly blamed for the affair, and she continued to deny it was as involved as it was. 
The therapist said that this was normal and to give both of us time and she would come around. That the bad behavior and lack of accountability was a defense mechanism. COVID came around and although I was starting to see old familiar drug related friends around, she was working again and we are doing well. As soon as the pandemic restrictions lifted, the gloves really came off. The manipulation, gaslighting, lies, disappearing, etc. We entered back into couples therapy to see if things could be resolved. Our relationship became progressively worse heading towards the holidays in 2020. December of 2020, she finally admitted to the affair and gave a backhanded apology. After this, she rarely came home again, maybe two days in a two month period. I was at home with the kids while she ran around the town. At this point, I had already hired a PI. The evidence was as bad as you could expect. She was sleeping with a mutual friend and back on drugs. Literally all of our so-called friend circle was masking the affair for their own benefit. They all drank and did drugs heavily and I was the outcast at this point. Wow. She came back into the house trying to enter counseling again. Unknowingly to her, I was already checked out mentally and just gathering evidence for divorce. She still played like she was so in love with me, but I knew better. As the PI kept following the evidence got worse. She was now sleeping with a good friend that lived six homes away in the same neighborhood. Definitely had to keep my eyes on the prize and keep my children safe. All of this once again while I am working six days a week and we are in therapy to repair the financial and emotional mess she made. The sad part came in the end after I filed for divorce from bed and board, North Carolina. Her and the AP went full speed and that day she was served and kicked out. They were right there together. They are moving into his home on the same street as me. As terrible as this all is, that's not the half of it. I found out through discovery she was never faithful. I was the second option from the start for a boyfriend that ghosted her before we started dating. She cheated on him and he dropped her. I found out she had no less than seven affairs during our marriage and that's just the ones I can count. Her sister who I was close with lied to me and actually helped her have the affair the entire time. Our entire relationship was basically a lie with tons of manipulation, blame shifting, and gaslighting. I now know I was stuck in a toxic relationship with someone who was diagnosed as a BPD. The gift was in the end and done by her being so comfortable that I would just let her walk on me. I had broken out of a toxic relationship and was able to plan the exit with support from a therapist, lawyer, and couple good friends. I ended up getting out of the marriage without having to pay a single dime with my business and with sole custody of my kid. She literally was only allowed her clothes and personal items. She's tried her best to smear me across town with every imaginable lie. The AP who she moved in with has his home now in foreclosure from the financial strain of being a simp and paying her divorce lifestyle from me. She is no longer allowed to contact me or come anywhere near me. The lawyer and I are contemplating a suit for alienation of affection allowed in my state just to drive the point home. I try my best not to be vengeful, but with her, it's well deserved. Back to the point. I hear guys in your videos actually contemplating forgiveness. Having made that mistake, your video should be handed out at weddings, lol. If she cheats, leave her. You are not her first choice and never will be. You cannot repair the marriage and will ultimately fail within a few years statistically. If she comes back, it's only because she's out of options. Go no contact and let the cheater lay in the bed they made. Best wishes, Alex. Wow. Man, you are absolutely right. You are right. Um, You're not her first choice. When she cheats on you, she's showing you she has no respect for you. You know, and a lot of times, a lot of signs are thrown at you before she actually steps out, you know, but a lot of guys do ignore red flags. But in this case, man, so she was on drugs heavy and drinking and these group, groups of friends. So I'm guessing like you, you all were part of that lifestyle at one point And did you like get out of it? And, you know, she, she stayed in it and it's just, man. It's just a big, big mess. 
um and having the pi catch her you know performing these acts on men for for her fix crazy wild man um and this is another story and, and i'm glad you learned from it you're saying look i took the woman back i was an idiot and i realized it wasn't going to change her she only it got worse that's typically what happens you cannot take someone back who cheated on you they're just not gonna respect you at all <laughs> you're wasting your time just, just don't whether you're married to them it's just the girlfriend boyfriend thing it doesn't matter they're not gonna respect you salute to you man i'm glad you're doing well i hope you're doing well um fixing to do a alienation of affection contemplating a suit man wow uh go ahead and update us let us know how that goes you know we I'd, I'd like to know um but thanks for sending in your story because just like you said man you said you found my channel because you went out looking for answers right dude that's how i found a lot of people's channels that helped me before it was uh it was in 2018 coming up on at the, coming up to coming up at the end of the year of 2018 i was going through it with someone it was bad man it was bad and i'm just going online and i'm i'm listening to people uh i at first i was reading a lot of stories right and i didn't realize at the time that i was always i was going to reddit um but i would google you know questions and i would go to it would take me to the site um i think it was like questions and answers or something like that and i would just read people talking about yeah i've been through that yeah i've been through this and a lot of times i would end up on reddit and then until i started doing videos when i did like my first reddit story i said man this interface looks familiar this page looks this fake this page looks very familiar oh this is the page i used to go to when i wanted answers you know i wanted to read about people going through the same thing and i used to read stories all the time just before before i got on youtube and started telling my own story and i would tell my own story and then people started telling their stories in the comments and i said hey send an email and i'll tell you guys the story too and it turned and I started doing articles and Reddit posts and all that stuff. So, but man, like, um, we, a lot of us do stumble upon channels. I've subscribed to channels because I was looking for answers before, before 2018. I, I have not, I never heard of gaslighting. I can be honest and tell you, I never heard of that, but then I'm listening to someone talk about it on YouTube and I'm like, that's exactly what she was doing yeah she did that i i forgave her and, and it got worse you know i started like seeing that other people were going through the same things and when you see that you're not alone it gives you this sense of comfort like it makes you feel good you're like yeah I, I, it sucks that other people are going through this because i'm hurt and i know that person's person is hurt but let me see if i can reach out to this person and and talk to them about it like how'd you get through it let me hear their story you know i i forgave her you know um after she destroyed me again after forgiving her focus on myself and i leveled up you know um and people going into details like it hurt it hurt going leaving walking away because you wanted the marriage to work you wanted the that six plus year relationship to work and last but you, but you have to realize there's nothing you can do. When the other person is done, they're done. And you just got to put your hands up and walk away and care more about yourself. Care more about yourself. If someone's telling you, I don't care about you, you should be like, okay. You should get, you should be able to, you got to work up to that point to where you're like, okay, you don't care about me. All right. And you walk away and um, you got yourself. You care about yourself more anyway. It doesn't matter. You don't need anyone to tell you that you're great or you're this or you're that. I know I know what I am. Work towards your purpose. Work out. Start a business. Focus on your career. Whatever it is. Motivational speaker, a welder, engineer, whatever you're doing. Become better at it. Become great. 
You want to go back to school, go to school. You want to go learn a trade, go learn a trade. You know, focus on you. What makes you happy? Having someone stand there and, and, and tell you like, oh, you're the best person ever or you're this and you're that or, you know, that shouldn't be the end all be all. You know, it starts with you. You got to look in the mirror and be very comfortable with yourself. So hearing these stories and everybody hearing each other's stories, man, it's, it's just very helpful. And uh, thanks for sending in this story. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out another email. Okay, I remember you. I think I've read a couple of your stories in the past. And it looks like I might have missed this one. Yeah, it looks like I might have missed this one. Okay. Subject. Are you kidding me? Hey, True. I swear, this just happened five minutes ago. I had to share. I have been separated from my second ex, ex-wife from for two years already. I am very happily living alone. Well, with my dog anyway. I am studying hard in my classes for my master's degree. I was just finishing up my online teams class when my second ex-wife just called me. Oh, great. She tries to create small talk with me. Tells me she's in Florida. I cut her off and I told her, what could you possibly want from me now? She started sniffling and crying that her husband that she divorced me for just left her on the side of the road. She's cold, hungry, and had no one else to call. She said, you owe me nothing, but I need help. Can you forward some money to me? Once I get a motel room, we can talk about getting back together. Oh no, nope. <clears throat> I started laughing. I told her you left me, a man who tried to help you every way I could, for your new husband. And now he got fed up with you and left you all alone. And thinking I was going to support you, you summon up alligator tears and fake begging to send you money until you find someone else? I don't think so. She got upset. I called you because I need help. You were always there for me. I couldn't help but smile when I told her this. I was, but you left me. And now you are wasting my valuable time trying to manipulate me again. Not happening. Goodbye. I hung up on her, put my phone on do not disturb, re reported her emails to me as spam, and just changed every possible password I had for everything to make sure she has no idea what they possibly could be. I honestly feel great. I now know I've taken back my life. My life is my own. Keep up the great work, True. Wow. <laughs> nice man Salute to you man uh, <laughs> i man, i missed this one so i actually read i, I think I, it might have been the last email i did i read yours and it was the date was after this one and this one i hadn't even opened yet so i, I missed this man salute to you yeah I, I remember you are in school and you're trying to you're getting your master's and everything so she tried to come back yeah you didn't let her in salute to you this is how you got to do it because you know you know think about it what she say she said i called you because i need help you were always there for me she knows who to call and you're not that guy anymore you 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 came you become a different person you become a better person let's say that you become a better person and she doesn't like that you did the right thing, blocking her, getting rid of her emails, reporting it as spam. Salute to you. You are the man. My wife wants to open our marriage, but only on her side. Wow. New readers, welcome to Dear Wendy, a relationship advice blog. My wife and I have been married for 10 years. But she recently was asking me for an open marriage. I can't say I love the idea, but I think I could be okay with it so long as it's open on both sides. My thinking was that it'll hurt if I'm like, I want to be with only you. And she's like, I also want to be with someone else. Because, well, that sounds like a bad conversation to have. Maybe if we both open it up, then the give and take is more balanced. It'll be different but we'll settle into it. She insists that she only wants to open up the marriage on her end and has accused me of being selfish. Wow. She keeps saying that if you truly love someone, you want the best for them, 
even if it's not with you. Basically arguing that I should stay monogamous because that would make her happy while she isn't monogamous. And I understand the beauty of selfless love, but it also doesn't make sense to me. It feels like she's accusing me of being selfish for being sad that she doesn't want to be with me as much as before and for wanting to try and adjust my feelings accordingly. It mattered to me, i.e. it made me so happy to know that she wanted to be with me and that we were together and I don't understand how I am being selfish when those things matter to me in the breach too. How could they not? I don't get it. And it has my head in knots. Am I unreasonable for taking my stance? Am I being selfish? Negative connotation for doing so. How to open up. Wow, let me get my thoughts before Wendy answers. So guys, I saw this, right? And you guys know we lately we've been doing this open marriage or I've been doing these stories about open marriage and whatever. And in, a, in, a, in, in most of those stories, we already knew what the one woman wanted. She would rather have it open on her end. Lo and behold, I find something where a woman actually admits it. She actually admits it. Yeah, I just want it open on my end and you stay monogamous. You know what I think? She looks at him like he is just nothing. She's she has the courage to come to you and say that and, and thinks it's OK. That says a lot about how she thinks about her husband. Look, I'm going to go ahead and smash my coworker and my boss and whoever I want. You stay home. You do not meet no other woman. Matter of fact, you start cooking and cleaning and doing the dishes I'm not helping with anything like she's she she's showing I do what I want. And and I because I can't believe he's like asking, guys, what should I do? Am I being unreasonable? What are you serious now? I don't knock people. There are people out there who have open situations. There are there are couples like that and they actually thrive. They've been together for years. It's just what they do. So if he's he's saying, like, I'm OK with her doing her, but I got to be able to do me like. Do you just get out of that situation? If that's something you're you're OK with and she's OK with, then it should just go down. But if she's saying, no, it's going only going to be one sided. Bro, she has no respect for you. I don't see how anybody could be OK with someone sliding with their wife. And them coming home and being with their wife. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But I do know people do it. But, um, dude. Come on. Wake up. She has no respect for you. The marriage is over. You guys don't agree on something very serious. I can only hope that kids are not involved in this marriage. These two are just, wow. Let's check out Wendy's response. Your wife is the one who is being selfish and unreasonable. She doesn't want an open marriage. She wants permission to cheat. AKA she wants you to be a cuckold. F that noise. I'd be one. Th it'd be one thing if you were game. Hey, this is a fetish for some folks. That's true. Some guys are into that. But you aren't. You aren't even really into the idea of an open marriage. You two want different things. She doesn't respect you. Thank you. She's selfish and manipulative. Is this even a marriage worth fighting for? If so, get you both to couples counseling. See if there's any room to repair the marriage. Wow. Like I said, guys, I saw this and saw that there was like a little... <laughs> Basically, the wife admitting what she really wants to do. I just want to cheat on you. You know, I don't want to hide anything. I just want to do it and you be OK with it. She's basically that's what she said. I heard a woman say once that she was like, OK, if if I was in a perfect world and I can have it my way, I would have five husbands. And she started naming all these things these guys do. 
you know, they'll they'll what they'll do for her. I'm telling you, a lot of times they're just not happy <laughs> with one. You know, it's like it's the whole I want more and more. They can get something they think is great. Oh, he bought me a house. He takes me on vacation. He does this. He does that. He blows my back out. But he just doesn't do this one thing. You know, and let's say he busts his tail to do whatever that one thing is. It'll be something else. Eh, but I want you to do this. I want you to do this. It's just eh, never enough. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.